Hey, Mike, uh, do you have any uh, local reportings that have uh, showed up since the last time we checked in? Yeah, we have a, a number of reports uh, that have come in recently. One of them's right nearby, just uh, less than a couple of miles from here, up on the ridge. And it's in an area where we've had other reports and where previously we found a little uh, sort of a hunting blind made of sticks down in this uh, little uh, creek bed. Um, and we've had lots of reports of screams up there as well. And there's a lady that lives way up at the top, real close to the ridge. And uh, at the top of the ridge, there's a quarry. And, uh, of course, in our local area, we have found uh, there's definitely a correlation between Bigfoot sightings and quarries. So uh, we went up to that quarry not too long ago and recorded some screams of our own. And on another episode of this, we'll play that for you. But we want to go up there because this woman told me that uh, she hadn't heard any screams for about four months. And then, uh, oh, five weeks ago, we had a little thunderstorm here. And she said the night of the thunderstorm, the scream started again. And that for three nights in a row, she heard uh, outrageous screams coming from the direction of the quarry above her house. So uh, uh, she is open to us coming up and uh, spending the night there and listening and, and doing some more recording. So we'll be heading up there. Um, we also have a report from a man up above Boulder Creek, which is clear up on the other end of the valley here. Uh, up in a uh, in a neighborhood that uh, butts up against uh, a pretty wild, uh, wide open wilderness area, and uh, the man um, is convinced that he's got a Bigfoot that uh, visits his garbage on occasion. And recently, he said that uh, it, it apparently was getting into the garbage. He went to get a flashlight, and he said just the sound of him getting up out of bed and, and getting the flashlight and walking to the window uh, apparently. Uh, alerted this thing, and so when he stuck the flashlight out and shined it on the garbage can, whatever had been in the garbage can was gone. And he found indications on the hillside above the garbage of uh, these uh, scuff marks and so forth indicating something might have crawled up the hill uh, in the ivy right next to the garbage can. And he'd had this happen before on previous occasions. Uh, he's also convinced it's not a raccoon because he says that normally uh, the raccoons, when he points a flashlight on them, they just look at him. They're used to it. Uh, you know, they're very habituated. And there are raccoons that get into the garbage cans in this area, because we've seen and heard them. But uh, he said normally, when a raccoon is around the can and he makes a ruckus or shines a light on them, they get under his car and just hide there until he goes away and they come back out again. They don't climb this hill, and they don't leave these big hash marks that are th like three feet apart on the side of this hill. So he also claims that... Uh, He's hearing cries, and he leaves for work at about 3.30 in the morning to head over into Silicon Valley. And he says that he thinks that there's, there's one that uh, uh, is going through the neighborhood and calling out to the others, and calling them home, so to speak. And he says he can hear a rooster crying, and the rooster is apparently moving through the neighborhood because he'll hear it close by and then a time later he'll hear it and he can tell you know the Doppler effect that it's gone a little further away and then he'll hear it again a little further away and he's uh, pretty convinced that this is not a genuine rooster that what he's hearing is something imitating a rooster and he says he's heard other uh, cries and bird calls and things at, at hours of the night when they shouldn't be there um, and, and, and you know on, on an ongoing basis for the last six months around his place so he's, he's pretty convinced he's got a Bigfoot there. So we're going to go uh, put a camera on his garbage can uh, if we can get one totally hidden there. And uh, we spent time there in the past and we recorded some cries, but there were nothing more than raccoons. But uh, we haven't given up on it, and we're going to try that one pretty soon as well.